Hey cats, it's Ed, Pace Tuned Bud here. Today, a review from a brand new running manufacturer. Been a long time waiting for this one, but I've got the Vimazi Z40 or Z40, depending where you come from. A Pace Tuned shoe, just right for my tempo pace. How does this one shape up on foot? Let's find out. Z40, you know what I'm talking about. Thanks for tuning in, people. It's always appreciated. Hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications so you're notified. Also, give this video a thumbs up like. That helps an awful lot. And share it with your running buddies. You know it makes sense. So, a long-awaited initial batch of shoes from Vimazi here. This is the Z40 or Z40. It's pace tuned for between 6 minutes 15 and 7 minutes 45 seconds per mile. So, that sort of lower 4 minute per kilometre sort of range. They pace tune the shoes, so that means they basically use different types or amounts of cushioning in the heel and the mid to forefoot. This is a UK 11 or US 11 and a half. It's coming in at about 308 grams which I believe to be about 10.9 ounces if you like that sort of thing. Crude stack height measurements next. I got about 38 millimeters in the heel and there's approximately 33 millimeters in the forefoot. So it's about a five millimeter drop. Now a bit of a sizing alert here. I would suggest for you to go up a half size from your standard. Absolutely workable in terms of my normal size here but if I was going to do a half or a full marathon I think I'd probably want to go up a half size. Just give me an extra bit of toe box room it does state this is like a 30 centimeter length shoe but like if you're a nike uk 11 i'd definitely go for a uk 11 and a half using the shore a drawmeter tester i got a 38 for the midsole foam here and in terms of the outsole rubber about 60 so that's quite a bit more than the average that's about 28 across all the shoes that i've tested out in the collection i'm not saying it's very firm or it's very soft i'm just giving you those measurements so you can make up your own mind got about 11.3 centimeters in the widest section of the shoe up here in the mid forefoot and about 8.6 centimeters in the heel area in the widest point so very similar in terms of the underfoot profile really to something like the puma deviate nitro 2 and that's not where the similarities end with these two shoes just for the purposes of transparency, Vimazi have sent me this shoe for review, but they're not paying me to make this video and they're not vetting my views before my valued viewers get to see them. We will start the review with the upper first. I tell you, it's certainly a striking looking shoe. There's nothing quite like it out there. Upper wise, we have an ungusseted tongue here. It's just sort of free. There's nothing around the sides of the shoe to hold it on. There is a touch extra padding up and around the top of the tongue just to prevent the pressure from the laces getting to the top of the foot. Overall, the shoe fit is somewhat narrow. I wouldn't suggest it's one for the wide footers out there. Very similar, in fact, to the Puma Last that we've seen being used in 2022. I think that's ample amplified a little bit by the numerous overlays that we've got here that lead to the front of the shoe. These creep up and around the medial and lateral sides. It's certainly a thicker upper here, though you do get a really good lockdown feel. Nice to see those final reinforced eyelets there. They are sort of little metal rivets. I think that's going to extend the durability of the upper somewhat. It's certainly not a paper thin type affair. I think we'll get some decent longevity out of this one. The rear heel flare here on the Z40 does remind me a little bit of the New Balance Beacon. Do you remember that? And also, I guess, the 1080 as well, those fins that we've got here. There isn't a traditional sort of plastic heel counter, but the heel area does enough there to hold the foot in place. Though it is quite a change from the standard sort of design and profile that we're used to. Laces on the Z40 are quite flat and quite coarse, though that does aid in keeping the shoe tied. I do worry a little bit though about those metal rivets. They do reach back quite far, and to be honest, the tongue doesn't fully cover the last ones. I haven't had any issues with that so far, but you know, just putting it out there. There's certainly a upper that's more for the traditionalists, for the purists here. There is some padding there on the inner section of the heel to help hold the foot in place. Though I did find that the laces aren't really long enough to actually do a runner's knot here if that is your preference. So I haven't been able to really make use of those third eyelets at the end of the chain. I could switch it out to some longer laces here. Just be aware of that if you do go for this shoe. I've used a standard knot arrangement so far and I've had no issues. Don't expect some sort of stretchy knit like feel like you get in a New Balance shoe. It's got a locked in sort of feeling around the foot. It's certainly a more higher paced sort of shoe in terms of its fit. I'll elaborate a little bit more on that later. 
You will notice here I've switched to over and under lacing. The lockdown's actually a little bit improved since I did that. I typically do that with Adidas shoes as well. This has put a little bit less pressure around the first few eyelets of the shoe. So overall, aside from that lace length issue and a somewhat warm upper, I suppose, I mean, summer's coming, but it's definitely on the warmer side, quite toasty. It's certainly a well-crafted shoe in terms of a quality perspective. I think the upper sits somewhere really between the New Balance Beacon 3 and maybe some of the Puma DVA offerings. I'll give this a 2.5 out of 3 after my initial runs for the upper. Midsole. Midsole. Midsole now. Now this one certainly wants you to run at tempo pace or above. It's that type of shoe. A bit more aggressive. Not really one that I would suggest you want to use for a a very sort of daily easy sort of run for me it sits nicely at that sort of 730 per mile pace and upwards feels really good and responsive on reps tried some intervals in it and a few sprints and it just feels like it hits the spot when it's going quicker somewhat refreshing to run in a shoe that's got no plate or air units gel anywhere just a more traditional running shoe experience i guess more in the mold of the adios 6 or 7 perhaps the deviate nitro 2 though without the plate it's certainly a firmer ride for sure there'll be some people that will just say well it's just not squashy enough that's not what vimazia are aiming for here in this shoe you're just going to get more response from your foot strike here i mean it's still cushioned but you know if you want that ridiculous squash you know where to go by now. I think I love the Adios 7 for the same reasons I'm enjoying the midsole here. Certainly a higher tempo trainer for me, this one. Not perhaps one that I would consider racing in, but certainly for training purposes, it's got everything that I want. I found the Z foam or Z foam, depending where you come from, to be very resilient. It's certainly quite responsive, though I did find I needed to tailor the shoe a little bit. I found the insole that actually comes with the shoe to be a little overly thick around the arch area. There's this sort of big buildup of foam there and I found it was kind of bothering my foot a little bit. I took those out, replaced them with some much thinner insoles without any real arch support there. Just a sort of less present insole and that has done the trick. Now, this isn't the first time I've removed a stock insole and fooled around with that type of stuff, but it has improved the underfoot feel. It also reduced the weight of the shoe down to about 294 grams, about 10.4 ounces, about half an ounce basically. So if you are going to pick up a pair uh, do perhaps consider fooling around with some different insoles. It has tailored the performance of the shoe a little bit and made it that bit more versatile. I can certainly see this working within my rotation for some fartlet work, some kilometer reps, maybe multiple mile intervals at perhaps that sort of marathon or half marathon pace. Maybe even throw in a quicker 10k in there too. The foam here certainly does benefit from some break-in. The more you use it, the better it will get. I really did like the cushion here though, coming down some quite sharp hills earlier on today. Rear foot cushion there, really on point. I typically like shoes to have about an 8 mil drop, 5 mil here, and it feels absolutely fine. Perhaps if you like Hoka shoes or New Balance offerings, then you'll really enjoy this one. You'll feel at home. I think it paces towards the upper section of what this is aimed for. That's about 6 minutes 15 per mile or 3.55 per kilometre. And it certainly moves. I can see it being a great training model, perhaps with better midsole durability here. Just going to get more out of the shoe. This isn't one of those very, very crumbly foams that's just going to tear and break. It isn't quite the squashy ride that everybody craves for these days, but I'm telling you now, it's stable and it's assured i'll give this a 2.6 out of 3 for the midsole after my initial runs i think that's only going to go upwards though the more i use it outsole now and it's an interesting affair you will notice i've picked up some stowaways here sadly that is one element of the shoe that you're going to have to put up with that rubberized foam the exposed stuff that we've got here does let in lots of stones and grit so it's a jeweler's screwdriver job once again there's some considerable rubber here though around the edge of the outsole there and in the heel too and you've got that rubberized vimazi logo absolutely no issues here with grip whatsoever very assured there's a bit of wear to the paint on that sort of mid to forefoot area i'm not really too fussed about that no one's going to be looking at that i don't treat these shoes like some sort of works of art i put them on foot and use them if you want to put them in your glass cases fair enough but that's just not for me i guess if you're using this on tarmac or road you're not gonna have too many problems unless you're running towards the edges of the road where a lot of the 
rocks and debris gets kind of thrown due to the camber i think if you run on concrete and sort of some paths and things you'll probably have no issue only time will tell if the durability of the rubber will hold up i guess we'll see in the 100 mile review when i get there but there's certainly lots of surface area here in the outsole to improve the stability i'll give it a 2.5 for the outsole so far just a bit of a shame i'm picking up lots of debris i'm going to liberate those right now in fact interesting there's no damage actually from those rocks there i did have some damage on those brand new vaporfly 3 so yeah what's done is done value now so value wise he's clocking in about 175 dollars and that's about 140 pounds or earth credits if i convert it i think they're only available in the us at the moment though they do offer free shipping obviously it's a brand new company here Vimazi, looking to get some foothold there no pun intended in a very congested running shoe market so many models so many brands but it is refreshing to see Vimazi trying something a little bit different here not just following the trend of that sort of carbon plate cookie cut a thing bit of a unique entry point i suppose i guess some people might find that 175 price point a little bit high and i guess it's a little bit weighty for some people in terms of their configuration what you get with the shoe though i've got to say the pace tune thing is working for me i think we'll probably see constant refinement of this design perhaps in future iterations perhaps changing up the materials a little bit and lowering that weight they'll sculpt each of the models and make a few subtle improvements each time as it is though i'm finding the z 40 a really good tempo shoe one that is gonna stay in my rotation i'm gonna keep training now and just keep it nice and steady maintain the consistency see if i can get myself into another race quite soon if not a marathon i'll definitely go for the bristol half marathon in may i guess a few of you might feel that the insole's a little bit off that's easily changed it's not glued in or anything perhaps if you use your own insoles anyway then quids in do persist with the shoe though if you do pick it up i found that the foam just gets better and better the more miles you put in so lots to enjoy here in the Vimazi z40 if you like that responsive ride that you get from shoes like the adios 6 or 7 perhaps you don't get on with those overtly squashy shoes in training then this one's right up your street a quality first iteration of the pace tuned lineup i'm sure we're going to see lots Lots more of these in the future i'll give it a 2.5 out of 3 for value after my initial runs if i've totaled the scores up correctly that gives us 10.1 out of 12 for the z40 from vermazi perhaps you're over on the right side of the pond and you're considering picking this one up let me know your thoughts and opinions on the shoe down in the comments musical interlude time one of my favorite albums ever has got to be forever changes by love if you've not heard this one please go out and listen to it fantastic sort of psychedelic folk i guess tracks to check out of the daily planet and more again is a really brilliant song as these twisting turning chord changes every single sentence within the song has some sort of questioning delirious strange vibe about it there's some brilliant guitar playing on here as well brilliant acoustic guitar stuff everything about this album is just very very individual it's not really any other album in the world that sounds like it i was lucky enough to actually see arthur lee in concert a couple of times before he sadly passed away it was absolutely brilliant he sounded just like he did on the album so yeah if you can find any live recordings perhaps on youtube or something you're in for a treat. Go and check this one out, Forever Changes by Love. Thanks for tuning in, people. Hope you've enjoyed today's review. Hit that subscribe button, click the bell below for notifications. Also, give this video a thumbs up, like, and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.